I want to talk to you again today about dimensions and specifically selecting where you want your dimensions to uh, start from. So this is a student's work and you can see here that this dimension says 6 inches and 11 and 16 well, I know that that is not how tall this door is. It's not a baby door. And you can see that the extension lines don't go all the way to the object like these guys do. And so that's just a problem of selection. AutoCAD thinks that you are measuring this distance in paper space. So it's thinking real world versus here, these lines are, connected to the object so it goes into model space and it thinks about what you've actually drawn and we can kind of see that because you see the little dot here which may not show up on your screen um, you can see on this one it's connected to the object and here it's pulled to the side I would like to see both of them connected to the object so I'll show you how to do that uh, the other problems I've seen is that, um, say I wanted to measure this height, uh, people will click on the object itself and then pull it over. But now you've got your extension lines going through the object, which clutters up your drawing and makes it difficult to see. So the easy way to fix that is to I'm going to delete this and I'll do a dimension again and I'm just going to zoom in so you can see and I've hovered my mouse over the endpoint and you can see it's got a green box around it now I'll get even closer Oop, green box and then I just draw my mouse away towards the edge of my object and you can see that there's a green dashed line there so I'm going to go all the way to the edge of my object and then I'll click on the um, X there and then I will go back up to the beginning or the top of the section I wanted to measure and I'll get the green box and the green box is just telling me it's the end point if I was doing a midpoint it'd be a green triangle um, but the box means that it's the end point versus an X for the intersection, but I want the end point. So I've got the green box, and then I'm going to draw my mouse away. Sometimes it can be picky. It thinks you've changed your mind. So you can kind of have to be finicky. Because I'm trying to show this to you, it's being a brat. Well, I'm just going to stick with the intersection because they should be in the same place. All the way to the edge of my object and I'll click again. And I'll just bring it over so you can see. So it lets me get a more precise measurement because there that had 3 sixteenths of an inch versus the two foot nine that I know it to be. And when you click, I'll escape. And when I click on this and I go to properties, it tells me that it's associative. And that means that the dimension is connected to the geometry of the object. So that if I, for some reason, moved the door, this dimension would go with it because it knows what it's connected to versus this line, this dimension here, isn't connected to the object at all, so it would just stay right there if I moved my door. So another thing I have seen is that when uh, people do dimensions in a line like this, sometimes they're dimensions don't quite line up like one dimension line well, it's usually not that bad is here and the other dimension line is here and they're just not stacked up in a nice little line so I'm gonna go ahead and delete 
all of these. And then I am going to do regular dimension right here. And I can click on the edge of the object. And what you want to make sure, if you've already got dimensions going, is that you go to your O snaps and you turn off node. Node is right here, it's off on mine. Otherwise, you could select the end of your dimension instead of the corner of your door. And this would be a problem because the dimension wouldn't be associated with your door anymore. It'd be associated with that dimension. So when you are doing dimensions, you want to make sure that your node is turned off. Okay, so I'm going to do the corner of my door. And then I want to know how high this is, so I'll get the endpoint, and then I'll slide my mouse over, making sure that I keep the green dashed line. And then I'll slide my dimension over. And now I could keep going, making individual dimensions, but then I would have a hard time getting them to line up nicely. I'll show you here. Well, now I have to go and decide, well, how far over? So do I try and get my mouse just perfect? So I did pretty well there, but it's a little tedious. So I'm going to control Z to get rid of that. Hit escape to stop doing dimensions. And then I'm going to go to my annotate tab up at the top. And I'm going to choose continue. And then I select the dimension that I want to start off with. So I want to start with this one. And now it's connected to that first one. And then I will go to the top of my paneling, slide my mouse over to the edge of my door. And then I can keep going all in a line. And now I don't have to worry that all my dimensions will be stacked nicely. And then when you're done, you just right click to complete. And now they're all in a line and it looks a lot better. And it's easier, anything to save time. And just a reminder, I will right click to complete. Oh, why are you mad? I'm just do that again to see why it was angry. Maybe if I just escaped complete. I redid it because when I right clicked, that one turned into zero inches for some weird reason. Just being rude. Another thing to be aware of in your DIM style, D-I-M-S, is that you turn off under primary units zero suppression for inches. So that your one foot, if you have a whole foot, it still includes the inches. Because that's just in the USITT guidelines. But you can leave the zero feet because that allows your inches, if you don't have a whole foot, if it's just six and a half inches, that it'll be six and a half inches instead of being zero feet, six and a half inches. So now that we have done all these individual dimensions, I want a total height for my door. And the way we can do that is if where we clicked continue, we clicked baseline. And I have it so that I can select what I want to be my baseline dimension. So I'll click the 10 and then I will go here. Interesting. Right click. So obviously I didn't quite click the right object because I've got um, started at the top of my dimension so I'll hit escape I'll delete that and try again so here we go 
and right click to complete. So I'm not sure what I did differently there so that it clicked on the right thing. So I'll escape out of that. Now sometimes when you click baseline, maybe if I do here, just to show when you click baseline, it connects to your last uh, dimension that you've done and it may not be the one you want. So if you look down at the bottom, you can do select or undo. So if I hit S, enter, it will let me select my baseline. So maybe I want this guy to be my baseline. And I'll click to the edge of it. And so you can see again that I didn't quite select the right thing because it's not doing the whole width of the door. So I can click U, enter, or type U, enter. And throw for a reason I don't understand, now it's happy and does the whole width of the door. So that was just a quick review of dimensions.